Namaste and welcome. Today's topic is really a candid one where I want to explore why you should not be starting a YouTube channel in the first place or why somebody should not start a YouTube channel as such. So I've listed out quickly 10 reasons around why you should not be doing it and I'll get started. So reason number one is it's sort of a rat race where um, everybody is trying to pour in and uh, it can go in any direction. Nobody is going to win end of the day except the YouTube or Alphabet INC or Alphabet, the parent company of Google. There are people who are of course serious, so with due respect to them and, and people who are successful, which surely works for them. But for most of the common men or common people, it's not really going to work uh, unless and until somebody is very serious about it. Reason number two is that it requires a lot of hours acting, speaking, talking in front of camera. It may or may not work. There's no guarantee that it's going to work. Like I often say to some of my friends here uh, in a funny way, right, that if you just stand in Walmart, you might be making $15 an hour. Uh, and if you're just trying to be on YouTube and unless you really work hard and being an early innovator in a specific topic, theme or area of your choice, uh, it might not be working at all. So. Uh, you are better off making $15 an hour at somewhere else where there's a guarantee that if you spend one hour, you're definitely going to get certain outcome out of it. Reason number three is that for now it works. Like people go there, they try to make videos, they earn advertising dollars there, uh, they, they push in ads and they earn money through that and sim through a few other methods, I guess, as well. But uh, for now it works, but let's say everybody across, now it is the second most search uh, second most used search engine across the globe. Now let's say we have a situation where everybody is actually making YouTube across the globe. So it's a huge scope in terms of what it can do, what it can, can teach and how educational videos can grow up. But at the same time, let's say if somebody, everybody starts pouring in. So let's say you have a topic like car designs. So if there are 10 guys uh, competing on YouTube for car designs, there'll be 20 guys and 100 guys. 100 guys more so of it like like that the pattern could go on and on and on so for youtube it is good because sort of he's youtube is using you as a broker if you will and then you kind of are a salesman for them directly or indirectly and whoever pushes ads for let's say car design as a segment uh, if let's say youtube makes ten dollars per ad they'll be giving you five four six dollars nobody knows the real number but there's a share of that wallet that you get but eventually imagine a situation where you have 20,000 people, let's say a random number in car design segment. What happens for them is that the cost of advertising uh, actually comes down because there is so much of content to choose from. Choose from. So whoever is really the greatest guy and the most well-known guy or the more frequent face or more known face, more followed likes and, and share obtaining kind of face will get that advertising money more as compared to the other ones. Uh, let's say if a client is investing $10 in a car design as a segment to show YouTube, to, to, sh to allow YouTube to show an ad on their behalf to their audience. So if let's say there were 10 guys, they might be getting $1 each. And when there are more number of people, you, know, you can do the math, but they will be getting less dollar per head kind of thing. So it's, it's going to be more competitive as we grow further from here, while the industry and the buyers and the advertisers who are paying money to YouTube to run these ads for your audience will continue to be the same. Number four is again a related point which is around recession. I've done predict some predictions about my videos in astrology or applied astrology series if you see my videos on my channel. Uh, there is a recession that's coming up. Uh, the banks are talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. They are deliberately kind of increasing the basis points, let's say or interest rates in other words, which is basically to cool down the market or get uh, less buyers in the market for anything real estate or any spending for that matter. So that's going to make recession happen and the markets will crash eventually. So there will be less advertisers as well because if people start, so let's say stop spending, businesses will have less to sell and they will eventually have a situation where there is no buyer or less buyers. So why will somebody advertise on YouTube? So even the advertisers on YouTube are uh, going to go down in, the, in terms of number and the money they invest in. They will be pulling out the money from YouTube ecosystem and eventually that also means that if you are somebody like a new YouTuber or starting on YouTube, your chances of getting higher money is lesser and lesser, at least when the recession kicks in. And if say let YouTube was earning $10 a client, they might be earning $5 a client or no dollars a client when recession or happens or kicks in. So it also means that you as a YouTuber or you earning trying to start a YouTube channel will actually get less money 
per video or per video or ad insert in your uh, videos as such. Fifth point is around data. So the fifth reason is around data, which is like the more people come in on YouTube, the more users are engaging every day as I speak. And then the more of this phenomena happens, like more YouTube's being created, more YouTube videos being created and more users are being engaged, engaged and engaged. So there's a huge scope in terms of business though. But what happens eventually is that all you are doing is you are giving more data around analytics or videos to the YouTube as a channel and the company, Google and Alphabet. And on the other hand, the people who are also engaging with you are giving a lot of data about their user behavior, their consumer behavior online, their patterns. And there are, since the data is big data or so enormous in terms of IT is that they do have separate versions for let's say teenagers, there is a YouTube, they can have a separate app, you can have one more variation. So basically big data will give them a lot of opportunity to make uh, niche and niche apps uh, within let's say YouTube or anything else as a platform it is applicable to other apps as well or any other video platform for that matter so they will have more chances of making more apps for you which is kind of a vicious cycle you give them more data they make more apps they come back to you so you your 24 hours in your lifetime are going to be more utilized on the app or your mobile screen or your devices which you know that it's not really healthy for your health uh, your body your eyes or anything for that matter six point being there is a lot of copy paste that happens I have, I have done some blogging in my past experience so i can tell you that i used to write a blog so there was no incentive for really having a website there was an adsense kind of a thing which was not really giving you any money or that money comparatively if i write a blog and let's say if somebody goes and read my blog from top to bottom and sort of uh, reword certain phrases or certain sentences in my blog to avoid any sort of copyright issue uh, they will have more awards or by revenue through advertising. If so they will earn certain dollar for sure through the same AdSense account, which otherwise if the AdSense account is deployed on your website, which is a open source website, let's say a WordPress website or Shopify website or anything that doesn't really contribute to Alphabet or Google as a parent company or their revenue uh, will actually mean that uh, you will not earn money from that. So a website, your own WordPress website, when you write a blog, may not may earn zero dollars for you. But whereas if you read the same blog, copy paste the same content and do it on YouTube as a video, that has more chances of getting you a revenue and also the YouTube uh, or, or Alphabet or Google as a parent company. Seventh point is again a related point wherein like you might really copyright a book when you write it as a whole, copyright, uh, you know, anything, a poem, whatever intellectual work you have, uh, any sort of, uh, you know, patent, for that matter but what happens in the video world for for instance is somebody can take a book your book and somebody can really read one paragraph or paraphrase the whole thing in their own words uh, technically to avoid a copyright so a copyright cannot really be copyright in an open world and a digital internet free world for instance so um, somebody would have worked hard like 10 30 years ago and their copyrights would have expired by the means of it so those things can easily be copied pasted. So there's no really practical way of you know, retaining a copyright, something from past at least which has expired. Now social media or YouTube in general is, is a channel as you, as you know, and there are good and bad and ugly things, all of them. It is up to the user to seek what they want. But to be honest with you, they do earn advertising on good news, good topics, politically correct topics, but they earn more advertising revenue or negative things, um, things which are escalating sort of negative things in society so anything which is more uh, eye catching or eyeball catching will earn them more attraction more engagement from the users more like shares angry whatever expressions they might have more comments but in general they earn more revenue from those things than the positive ones so there's a lot of bs which goes on on youtube you will find in fact there was a guy i posted on twitter that he actually sat for freight and there were other people who have mimicked him as well but essentially uh, there were people really watching that <laughs> experience is that that's that's not really being productive but again this this is the kind of use which i have seen youtube as well doing it and there is a lot of other uh, things which doesn't make sense also go through youtube the ninth point being the social versus computer or a video or camera skills so if you're in front of camera creating videos the whole day all you are worried about is what is my next video going to be it's sort of that anxiety and uh, aloofness that develops within, within you and all you are worried about when you meet somebody and you talk to your friends all you think about all the time is what's my next video going to be 
what's the topic I'll be talking about, how can I do better and all of that. So essentially, um, you are developing your computer skills, editing skills, video skills or laptop skills or mobile camera skills, but it's not really developing any kind of social skills. You are not going to people and talking to real people because in front of camera, people behave in a certain way uh, because they know there is a camera and they are conscious. It's not really the reality. A lot of times, uh, it's like LinkedIn, you know, when you give them an opportunity, people will want to write things they think nice about themselves. Uh, so it's anything but the reality. So it's like a, you are creating an illusion of thoughts around yourself by doing so. And it also means that developing more of computer skills, editing skills, whereas if you develop social skills, uh, those are good for health, your mental health, your friends. Friends are better than talking to YouTube, you know. So when you meet somebody in person, it's never going to, again, it's my limited understanding on subject. And I'm a marketing professional as well, that uh, a person meeting uh, person to person will never be replaced totally by digital media. That's my assumption. But again, when you meet somebody, you have that charisma, that, um, you know, exchange of information, that ability to respond when you like you know hand gestures and everything your body can talk more than your your vocal cords but in the digital world it's not like that so um, so you learn more of digital skills here not really the real world or social skills there are all kind of people on youtube for sure there is people who know stuff or people who doesn't know a jack but they'll still be on youtube like making videos for instance but what happens essentially is that um, uh, there are less of really people who are knowledgeable and who know the subject and then they make videos. There are more of people who doesn't know anything or that subject. They don't have the qualification, command, experience or even authority over that subject. But they'll still be making videos. They'll still be successful, which is good and bad both in my opinion. But again, in terms of uh, people who are really successful businessmen like a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates, you, they will make certain videos, but you will not see them as a dedicated YouTube guy or they have better things to do in life. Like I have not seen Sundar Vishay, for example, making a YouTube channel, for instance. So you can understand the owner himself, or have you seen Larry Page or the Eric Smith and all that who founded the company, or Alphabet MD, which is I guess is Sundar Vishay again, is doing that. Have you seen Satya Nadella doing a YouTube channel or even a Microsoft channel there? There are educational videos for sure, but these guys themselves don't do. And like I said to my friends as well, have you seen now, Amazon has this Amazon Prime, but do you see uh, Jeff Bezos watching all the videos on Amazon or any videos on Amazon? It's like a lot of Hollywood or Bollywood actors, they do acting, but they don't see their own videos. So they understand the background illusion and fakeness that's there in this whole glamour world. They don't want to see it more because they are doing it every day and night kind of thing. So again, it's one more illusion uh, is, that has been created and there are lesser real people and with real knowledge and practical experience or qualification authority whatever you call it who makes sense but there is a lot of bs at the same time or there are a lot of things which are uh, which may appear to be nice but they don't have authority and they still have a lot of followers they make good money like uh, by the sources of information they just look at newspaper here and there media and they make their own opinion and talk so the information is not really first hand if you understand the importance of primary research it is secondary sources so Somebody would have seen some news here and there and they basically made another clipping of that video. So those were my quick 10 reasons. I hope it makes sense to you. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Namaste.